Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about something a little bit different, a couple DAC amps. Um, really one DAC amp because this is the Topping DX5, this is the Topping DX5 Lite. They are essentially the same unit, uh, just with different stickers. So the difference between the two units is essentially there is a light sticker here and there is an MQA sticker here. So the full-blown DX5, and this one is from my desk. I've been using it for the better part of a year. I am super familiar with the DX5. The light, they simply removed MQA support. So now they put a light sticker as opposed to the MQA sticker. Essentially the same exact unit. Uh, minus MQA. So Apos Audio gave me a shot, shot to uh, loan me a light and I just wanted to hear it for myself because I was super familiar with the DX5. So it was kind of cool to get a shot to hear the light and I think the light is probably the better deal at this point in time simply because it was cheaper uh, and MQA is being phased out anyway. So this is what it looks like. Uh, this is what the DX5 looks like as well. Same exact display. Uh, if you rotate the dial, and this is not a super heavy aluminum, chunky uh, aluminum dial that uh, other vendors tend to use. This one kind of feels a little bit lightweight, but it is clicky as well. So if you rotate it, uh, it does volume. If you push it, it actually cycles through your input. So coaxial, USB, Bluetooth, and optical. So... If you want to access their menu, you actually have to do this and do that. And maybe this will work from here. And you can kind of run through their menu this way as well. So four different options, five different options on the menu. You don't hit those all that often. But essentially all of that is identical to the five as well. My five isn't plugged in, but uh, that is the gist of it. The back of it looks like this. So balanced XLR, USB, optical, Bluetooth, antenna, coax input, power, power switch. So not a whole lot going on. Just a solid, solid unit that I've been using for a long time. The light is just as good. And we'll kind of run through some things that, uh, at least that I wanted to talk about on the toppings. And as I said, DX5 light. Yep, just a sticker with title phasing out. Uh, MQA, the the light is actually a better value unless you grab a DX5 from Apple's for $299. They happen to have, I think, a couple at a special price, so that's actually a pretty good deal. Spec dump, this one does use two ESS 9068ASs. It does use Topping's custom-built NFCA circuit amps, which is essentially why you are paying for Topping because of their custom development of that circuit. This one does do 1800 milliwatts at 32 ohms, Bluetooth, USB, coax, optical inputs, as I said. So, and I think that the gist of where topping and why I hesitated getting a topping originally, it comes down to this, you know, are toppings boring and soulless? And I think that kind of comes down to if you like a colored amp section, this one isn't for you. It's not really warm. It's not smoothed over. Uh, I would call this one closer to reference, flat, clean, resolving, transparent. And I think some people would say that the lack of any kind of coloring and its transparency is probably soulless, uh, perhaps boring. I don't know. I don't, I don't quite look at it that way. I think as a reviewer, as someone who likes to hear gear as it is, I think the reference style, the flat style, it is certainly clean with no noise. Certainly very resolving and very transparent. And I think that tends to reflect more on the IMs as opposed to hearing what, what is going on in the amp section. So, yeah, I never really, I never understood why they were called boring and soulless. But um, I sort of understand it from that perspective. If you like something very colored, I think that makes a little more sense. For the most part, IEMs tend to, that are tuned warm, will sound warm on the DX5. IEMs that are not warm won't be warm. Unforgiving tunings are still unforgiving. You know, I think this is reference. It tends to reflect exactly what's going on in the tuning on the IEM. And there's really nothing wrong with an amp that smooths over uh, unforgiving, harsh IEMs, just not a characteristic of DX5. I think there are other brands and, and other headphone amplifiers amplifiers that do a great job of smoothing over those kind of things. That's not exactly a topping 
characteristic and definitely not one of the DX5. But where it does excel, this warm plus treble extension and clarity. I think just casual observation of reviews and sets that I've reviewed and what other people have reviewed, I think warmer sets without real big upper treble boosts often are called dark and some of that just happens to be the source that they that may not be optimal for that particular case. And I think DX5 really gives you both by not really adding any warmth to it. It's a reference, so it doesn't add warmth, but it presents the, the upper treble where it can be heard with resolution and clarity. And I think that is where both the DX5 Lite and the DX5 sort of excel. And it's this treble clarity and extension and resolution. I think they do those very, very well. And sort of this boring bit doesn't really match up with if you're really into hearing that far outer edge in the in the treble i think topping does a very very good job at presenting that and for me that sort of really took off with the popularity of planar sets and how planers can extend into the treble in that way and i think topping's sound and the resolution in the treble actually works out um, very very well with planar sets and also, this is the topping design NFCA for high power, low noise, low output impedance. You know, those are just very good characteristics if you are reviewing sets. I think it tends to not color, even if you have hybrids that have crossovers that tend to be affected by output impedance, having high power but low impedance works out very well. But in 2024, is it a little bit too bare bones? You know, you saw the menu, you saw the display. It's not the fanciest of displays. It's not full color. You know, it, it's missing a couple features that you might find in some other brands. And I think SMSL does a better, better, you know, job at including tons of features at the same or less price. More more outputs, fancier displays. You know, maybe slightly slicker looking shells or uh, cases. You know, I think people buy these these units particularly for the sound, not so much for a full color display. Um, this one doesn't do I2S, so yeah, I think it is a little bit expensive, but essentially you are paying for the topping custom uh, circuits there, as opposed to you know some of the other fancier features that other brands are including at the same price point. So DX5 certainly has enough features as an all-in-one on your desk, and I've certainly been using one for about a year, but there are some advantages to SMSL approach with things like a 4.4 out, right? This one only has 6.35, which you can convert to 3.5 millimeter, and I2S as, a, as, a, as an input, as I mentioned. I think those are modern features that people are particularly like in desktop units. They don't want to keep you know, switching or upgrading amps and and to get those into the topping family, I think you have to go up to the DX7 Pro Plus or something like that. It's quite a big jump in price to get those features on a topping in the DX series. And as I said, you're really paying for the sound quality. But what if you do want more soul, warmth, and musicality from your topping? Just use it in DAC mode and buy a headphone amp. So you can essentially turn off the powered output and it'll be straight line out and you can do it that way. So that is what I got on DX5 Lite on DX5. So thank you again for tuning in and I will see you next time.